Gray matter is a key component of the brain's neural tissue. It's found in both the brain and spinal cord and is composed of the neural cell bodies that make up the central nervous system. The highest concentration of gray matter is in the cerebrum of the brain and gray matter extends into the spinal cord as well. Gray matter refers to the area of the brain that contains large concentrations of neurons, says Andrew Tiruli, MD, Neurologist and Chairman of the Department of Neuroscience at Overlook Medical Center and Director of the Neuroscience Services of Atlantic Health System. The cell bodies of the most cognitive and emotional functions reside in the gray matter. Gray matter is essential for all aspects of human behavior. Our central nervous system is composed of the combination of white and gray matter. Gray matter is found in the outer layer of the brain and is grayish in color. Both gray and white matter are important components of the brain, but gray matter plays a large role in our day-to-day -day functioning. According to Colin, white matter acts like a communicator between different areas of gray matter in the brain. Gray matter can be compared to computer chips, she says, and white matter is like the wires that connect these computer chips to each other. If you think about the brain as a big map, the gray matter represents all of the busy towns and cities she describes. The white matter represents the highways and local roads that connect the towns. All of these things have to work smoothly in order for your brain to function at its best capacity. Gray matter plays a significant role when it comes to how our mind and body function. It allows people to control their motor movements and it allows us to receive sensory signals from our environment. Gray matter also plays important cognitive and mental health roles. Gray matter plays a pivotal role in cognition, says Dr. Teruli. Gray matter governs intelligent thoughts, he explained. Gray matter also contributes to our cognitive process including memory, decision making, language and attention. Research has found some interesting links between gray matter and attention in particular, with some studies finding alteration in gray matter among children and adults with attention defect disorder ADHD. Gray matter also plays a significant role in how we regulate our emotions. For example, 2016 research found that emotional regulation was linked to decreases of gray matter in the orbital frontal cortex part of the brain. Decreased gray matter volume was associated with the ability to process emotions in a healthy way. The researchers also suggested that alteration of gray matter likely contributes to the development of psychiatric conditions that have emotional dysregulation as a main symptom. The way that our nervous system controls our mental health is not known specifically, Dr. Teruli says. Still, although most mental health conditions do not involve gray matter disturbance, alteration to gray matter can be linked with several mental health challenges. Injuries to gray matter can produce mental health disorder, Dr. Teruli remarked. Several neurological and psychiatric conditions are linked to gray matter abnormalities. Here's what to know. Alzheimer's disease is characterized by a plaque built up on the gray matter in the brain, causing significant and life-threatening memory and motor functioning issues. Major depressive disorder is linked to reduce gray matter volume. Gray matter alterations are linked to Parkinson's disease and are responsible for the body shaking that people with his condition exhibit. Multiple sclerosis is associated with plagues on both gray and white matter in the brain. There is growing evidence that gray matter changes are associated with schizophrenia. Neuroplasticity is the idea that the brain and its neurons are able to change and adapt based on learning experience and environmental factors. 
Although there is limited data on gray matter and neuroplasticity, there is some evidence that gray matter can be changed in a positive direction. For example, some studies have found that practicing mindfulness meditation on a long-term basis for several months or years can cause structural changes in gray matter. A 2020 study found that even brief mindfulness training could prompt gray matter plasticity. There are a handful of factors that affect our gray matters. Some of these factors are in our control and some such as aging are. Let's take a look at the type of factors that can cause changes to our gray matter. It's a difficult fact but most adults experience some levels of cognitive decline as they age. This may include changes in attention span, working memory and cognitive processing speed. Not everyone experiences a cognitive decline in the same areas and to the same extent, but the changes in cognition that are typically experienced are linked to the atrophy of gray matter in our brains. Or factors that can cause loss of gray matter include trauma and PTSD as well as blunt force trauma to the head and traumatic brain injuries. The gray matter changes that occur with aging and even with some mental health conditions usually don't require a physician to view your brain and its changes. However, if it's suspected that you have a condition like multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's disease, your diagnosis will likely involve some brain imaging methods to identify changes in your brain including to your gray matter. Some of the imaging techniques used to detect changes in the brain's gray matter include MRIs, functional MRIs, voxel-based morphometry, positron emission tomography scans. There is no known way to improve your brain's gray matter. If it's been altered or damaged, says Dr. Teruli. However, there are ways to protect your gray matter and to lead a more brain-friendly lifestyle. First and foremost, you want to protect your cardiovascular health. The best way to protect gray matter would be to take care of your cardiovascular health, which reduces the risk of stroke. Dr. Teruli says, Examples include adopting a heart healthy diet, stop smoking and controlling blood pressure. In addition, says Dr. Teruli, it's important to stay physically, socially and intellectually active. These are all important interventions that can protect gray matter health. In particular, research has found that staying physically active, especially as you get older, can protect your gray matter and decreases your risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. Studies have also found that alcohol use is strongly associated with decreases gray matter, so limiting your alcohol intake is important. Finally, research has found a link between excessive stress and gray matter alteration. Moreover, engaging in activities that decreases stress such as mindfulness meditation can keep your gray matter healthy. Cognitive training involves any activities that help you maintain your brain's ability to problem solve, think critically and utilize memory and attention span. Examples of cognitive training include doing a crossword puzzle every day, reading, doing trivia games and playing challenges card or puzzle games. Many older individuals make sure to engage in these type of activities to keep their brain sharp. There is some evidence that engaging in these activities can protect your gray matter specifically. Not only that but engaging in cognitive training throughout your life can decrease your risk of developing memory issue later as your age.